In this lesson, we'll create a quick pastel sketch of a beautiful autumn tree. For this demonstration, I'm using a photo reference that I picked up from Paint My Photo, which is at pmp-art.com. I'm working on a toned surface here. This is Canson Mitant's pastel paper, and I'm using the less textured side. There's two sides to the paper. Both sides are acceptable for creating pastel drawings. We'll start here by defining the main trunk of the tree here using a darker gray. We're going to use a looser approach for this drawing, so we're not going to get too wrapped up in making sure that our marks are perfect. We're just going to work quickly and loosely here as we continue to draw in some of the additional branches. Now in the background, we'll just start putting some interesting colors down. I'm going to start here with some warmer tones. We'll start with a very light pink here. We'll spread the pink around rather generously. Some of this color will show through, but the majority of it will be covered up in our final painting. Now, there's a darker green tree behind our orange autumn tree, so we'll fill this in with a bit of olive. Again, just quickly applying colors to the surface, trying to cover the surface as quickly as possible. Now we'll go back with a bit of burnt umber and darken up some of the values on the trunk of the tree and a few of the branches. Now we'll start adding some of our oranges. We'll start here with a red orange. Again, just broad, loose strokes. At this point, we're creating somewhat of an underpainting. We're going to apply a bit of matte medium in just a minute, and many of these colors are gonna be mixed in the process, creating a nice base to apply our finished strokes. Now we switched over to an orange, and we're just adding bits of this color here and there. We'll start darkening up some of the tone and value behind the main tree with a bit of burnt umber. Now, of course, the majority of the darker tones will exist lower on the picture plane in this case, since our light source, of course, is coming from above and less light gets down to the bottom portion of the trees behind our main subject. Now we're going to use a bit of matte medium. Now this is a fluid acrylic medium. We're going to load just a small bit of the matte medium onto a nylon brush and start working the pastel that's on the surface around with the matte medium. What happens is the pastel almost becomes a paint. Now of course you can accomplish this with water or also alcohol, but the matte medium doesn't wrinkle the paper as much and it dries very, very quickly. Now of course in areas where the values are a little bit lighter, I'm washing the brush off just a little bit to maintain some of those lighter tones, but you'll notice that even still the values become quite a bit darker, but this will work nicely for this particular painting. Now we can go back and start adding some of our colors directly over the top of the dried matte medium. Again the matte medium will dry in a matter of minutes so you don't have to wait very long. We're going to start here with a bit of olive, re-establishing some of those greens of the tree that's behind our main subject. This drawing, of course, is very, very loose. We're trying to work quickly here, and we're trying to get some nice, strong, bold color. So we're gonna use some bold colors as we apply. We'll switch over now to a bit of ultramarine. We'll use this ultramarine throughout the painting, and of course, it's gonna create a nice color vibration between the oranges that we add later. This, of course, is because orange and blue are directly across from each other on the color wheel. We'll also look for other opportunities to create a bit of contrast between color. For example, we'll pull out some of the greens and some of the reds as well. Now a bit of black is added in areas just to tone down the value even further. We'll also use this black on the shadowed side of the tree trunk. In this case, our light source is primarily coming from the upper right hand corner, so most of the shadows will exist on the left side of the tree. There's also a couple of distant trees off to the left side of the composition. We'll add a bit of black here as well. Now we can start getting a little bit lighter with our values and we'll switch over to a light yellow green. We'll add a few pops of color here and there with some loose strokes. And then it's on to adding our warmer colors. We'll start here with an orange. We're not concentrating too much on the actual shape of each individual leaf. Instead, we're looking at the leaves on the tree as a collection of marks. We're going to look at the direction that we pull the strokes. As you can see here, some of the strokes are a little bit more diagonal and some are more vertical. We want to make sure that we have a good mix of strokes that we apply in the painting. We also want to try to direct the viewer's eye through the painting as well with the marks that we make. We want to create a sense of movement in the painting. Remember, we're taking a looser approach here. We're trying to allow the colors and the composition to communicate for us rather than the details. So we're concentrating mainly on the colors and the values that we see and the directional strokes that we apply in the painting. Now we're gonna switch over to a slightly lighter orange and start developing some of the highlights. 
As we go, with each layer that we apply, we get more depth in the painting and more interest in our colors. You can also see some of those pops of ultramarine starting to peek out through the oranges that we apply. The contrast is increasing. We want to make sure that we have strong contrast in this painting between the darker values that happen in the background and the lighter, bolder colors and values that happen in the foreground. Now we'll add a little bit more yellow to the scene, this time with a bit of yellow ochre. One of the wonderful things about working with pastels is we get such immediate feedback from the marks that we make and the colors that we add. We can develop a painting like this in a relatively short period of time. And for those of you who are like me and who are very detail oriented, it allows us a release from that, it allows us to loosen up quite a bit and just create paintings that are colorful and fun. Now I'm going to go back and do quite a bit of negative painting. Basically I'm going to be adding a very, very light blue here. This may look white on the video, but it's actually a light, light blue. We're just going to designate a few areas where we can see some of the sky breaking through portions of the trees in the distance. This is really going to bring quite a bit of life and light to the scene. Most of these strokes are vertical, which will break up some of the horizontal strokes that we have in place. Now we can deviate quite a bit from the photo reference when we're adding this. Of course, we want to think about the composition. So we can add these peaks of color here and there that make sense for the composition for the piece of art that we're creating. Since we have quite a bit of orange in place in the composition, we can go back and start pulling out some more of those blues, again with the ultramarine. You can see how much the shadow pops when this is added. We'll use a medium gray to start developing some of the lighter tones or highlights on the right side of the tree as well. And of course, we'll add this color and a much lighter gray to the tree that exists on the left side of the composition. We'll use this lighter gray to pull out a few stray branches. Most of these branches are happening on the tree on the left side, which is receiving a little bit more light than our main subject. Now to add some of the darker branches, we'll use a black new pastel. This is a hard pastel, and we'll just use the edge of the pastel to pull out some of these smaller, more intricate branches. Now of course these branches will cross over some of the applications that we've already made, and they'll really start to add a level of detail to the painting without being too specific. We'll also add a couple additional smaller trees off in the distance here. We'll continue to add additional branches, and these branches also help to break up some of the vertical marks that are produced by the leaves. Most of these branches, of course, are horizontal in nature. We'll also use the black to add a bit of shadow underneath some of the larger branches as well. Now we can add additional contrast by going back over some of the peaks of the sky showing through with a lighter blue. Of course, our super light blue that we already have in place will mix with these light blue applications, toning them down quite a bit, but still allowing that strong blue to show through. We'll also use this light blue on the side of the tree trunk that's closest to the light source, producing a bit of natural highlight. And then we'll simply continue on beefing up our contrast with additional applications of a strong bright orange. And then again, a red orange as well. Now this red orange is going to contrast some of the greens that we have in place. And to make this red orange stand out a little bit more, we'll add a few more pops of our light yellow green. Next, we can add a bit of warmth to the trunks of the tree using a light to medium brown. We'll use this mainly in the center portion of the trunk. Then using a burnt umber, we'll go back in and develop some of the negative spaces in between some of the leaves at the bottom portion of the pitcher plane. And now our quick and loose pastel sketch of an autumn tree is complete. 
If you enjoyed this video, then I know that you'll enjoy being a member at thevirtualinstructor.com. Our comprehensive membership program includes video courses on drawing and painting, weekly live lessons, eBooks, lesson plans for teachers, weekly critiques, and much, much more. To learn more about our program, just visit thevirtualinstructor.com forward slash members or click on the card in the upper right hand corner. And if you want to check out three of our course modules for free, you can do so. Just click on the link on your screen now. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.